and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Timo Talia. Sorry, we got one more meme tier deck to play um, that we didn't get to yesterday. We have this uh, pretty cool looking Timo and Talia deck. This one's going to be a combo deck where we try to make many Timos with the help of some of these Sharima cards. So kind of like our plan here is like if we have Timo in play, we can Ancient Hourglass the Timo and get a, a Stasis Statue in its place. All right, so that's step one. So now we got this thing with the Countdown 1. We get an exact copy of the unit that we um, just obliterated. Okay, so now we're going to do that, but then we can use Promising Future, grant an allied landmark, my countdown completion effect activates twice. So we can activate that Stasis Statue twice. So that, therefore, we can have two Teemos in play afterwards. Or we can use Talia. Talia, of course, play, get an exact copy of, an, of a landmark. So we copy our Ancient Hourglass. And so now we have two of those, or, you know, the, the statue, I guess, are we copy the statue. So now we have two of them, and then we get two Teemos. So, like, both of these are ways to be able to get multiple Teemos in play with Talia and um, Promising Future. Also, if we have one other mana and another Teemo in hand, if we think about it, we can Hourglass the Teemo, and now we have no Teemo in play. So you can just, like, hard cast and just play another Teemo from your hand and also play, you know, like, your Talia and copy your Hourglass and now you can have three Teemos in play, which can be pretty cool. Because, of course, when you have your level up Teemo, how they double, um, you know, if you, have, if you get to do that multiple times, that could be really cool. So that's our, that's like the plan of our deck. Um, you know, <laughs> it's it's a little far-fetched, just a little bit, but that's why it's meme tier, right? Like, that's why it's going to be a lot of fun. We can also draw our champions with Golden Ambassador and also make them a little bit larger with that plus two, plus two. So we can have like three, three Teemos. That would be nice. Um, Rite of Calling is going to be another way to be able to find our champions as well. Whether we're killing an ally or destroying a mana gem, we could kind of do either one with this deck, depending on the, what the game looks like. We don't have that many allies in our deck, so Xenotype Researchers can be very powerful, because Xenotype Researchers granting three random allies plus three plus three, that could definitely hit the champions in our deck, because there's not that many allies in here. So if we hit the champions in our deck, and then if we can tutor up our champions with Golden Ambassador or right of calling they can have the plus three plus three and maybe like another plus two plus two from the golden ambassador so you know we could be drawing like six six teemo for example and now we have six six teemo and now we ancient hourglass that and copy that over and now we get multiple six six teemos you know so you can kind of see like where there is some potential here maybe we get a siphoning strike in there and make them eight eights you never know um all that you know that is kind of you know, magical Christmas land, I understand, but that that's why it's going to be a meme tier deck, and that's why it'll be fun to play. See if we can do any of that cool stuff. So we're going to go play our five games in normal, and we're going to try out our little combo deck here with Teemo and Talia. All right, we got Garen Vladimir for our first matchup. Okay, so our first hand, we probably don't need Ride of Negation, but I don't know. Like, Ride of Negation can do, like, you know, it can stop, like, the Vladimir ability. It can stop fight spells from Demacia. I think I'm going to just mulligan these two four mana cards, though. Keep our two champions. We'll see. Maybe I should be keeping that Ride of Negation. Cool, our opponent is a... Uh, it's a stream a viewer. That's cool. They're not ghosting or anything, so that, you know, they're playing honorably. That's cool. All right. Well, looks like we just pass in. I would like to play the chump one first and then do the two mushroom clouds to level the teemo before the teemo attacks. What I'm worried about is. My opponent plays a unit and then has Sharp Sight and Blocks. But I guess at that point I'd have another Teemo. So that's not like the worst thing ever. But just the upside of, instead of just getting five puff caps, the upside of, you know, doubling and getting 15 puff caps, right? Like, that's, that's just much better. Okay. 
So that worked out for me. New recruit reporting in. We have these right of callings where <laughs> all we have in our hand are champions and then right of callings. That is pretty awkward. It's like, <laughs> like what kind of champion are we supposed to draw over here? Soldiers to me. A Demacian soldier is worth ten foes. That's a lot of foes. I'd never keep my guests waiting. Delicious. Yeah, this is pretty nice. All right, so I think I'm gonna go Shapestone the Trump Lump to block the. No, I guess I guess it's a Shapestone. Wait, okay, is this gonna level up? One, two, three, four. Shapestone Teemo. Go down to eight. Pick them, I plan them, kid. Ooh. And ready. All right, good. No sharp sight. For justice, for Demacia. Keep your eyes on the horizon and your feet on the ground. Pretty worried about dying right here. This was kind of awkward of drawing, <laughs> drawing four champions and then two Rite of things that don't really matter because you already have all your champions in your hand. And yeah, that's the, this is the play I'm worried about. If they do that, I'm in a lot of trouble. Okay. So they don't do that. I'm still in a lot of trouble. Why do these things have to have countdown three? I don't think there's any, there's not any like landmark I can get that helps keep me alive, right? I think the best I can do is like siphoning strike a three, two, but I still am like very dead because they challenged my two blockers. What, let's see, is there any fast speed spells I can go find? Quicksand? Doesn't help. No. Spirit fire? Spirit fire? The road eventually. Spirit fire. Okay, that's my, that's my out. I have one spirit fire in the deck. That's my out. Here we go. Draw Spirit Fire. Oh, that's not it. Well, that's going to leave a GG's. Yeah, beating the lab with Talia is tough. Okay, Brom Vladimir. That is not easy. Basically, had, we basically built a, you know, drafted a deck that like we didn't have to use Talia ever. All right, so Braum Vladimir is the deck I never beat. I I'm like winless against this deck all time. I love Xenotype Researchers, and I really want to keep this hand. But yeah, that was just pretty awkward. Of like the two ride of callings, we couldn't play, and <laughs> they didn't do anything. And then yeah, multiple Talias, multiple Teemos, multiple ride of callings. That was a pretty awkward hand. All right, so I'm gonna wait on the Preservarium. I, right now, I'd rather save the spell mana for Quicksand. Um, plus, because I, I want to give like these plus three, plus threes first before I draw the cards anyway. I've never played against this deck where they don't have Scar Grounds, and I've also never beaten the deck. So those two are probably not a coincidence. I have the leg. I need the reputation. What do you make of that? I'm not sure. Again, we don't have that many allies in our deck. I think there's only like 16 total or something like that. Yeah, there's only 17. There's 17 total, including the champions. So we already have five of them in our hand, of those 17. So that means out of 12 of these, that's new. 
cooking it. They're gonna have three plus three plus threes. Let the flames take you. Is it me? But I'm rich. Please work. Please don't have Elixir of Iron. Just work. Yay! Alright, that's definitely important, killing that thing. That was worth it. Yeah. So yeah, out of our 12 allies, we're going to have a bunch of... Plus three, plus threes. So seven, nine. I take nine on this attack. It's nothing fast. Show me your best. Could save four, four life with the clicks. I don't know, but win. Mm. We can't double spell. That card's a problem. Like threading a needle. Our behavior. Not the face. deck is unbeatable. Nice. Got that that COVID vaccine. Awesome. Glad to hear. Now I could save four life again, but I need to need to start playing to the board. Man, that's lame. We're just gonna die from Crimson Disciple. For the Empire. That's lame. We're gonna have an 11-11 Teemo. Lame. Well, that's going to leave a bruise. All right, still never defeated Braun Vladimir before. Okay, Azir Rennington. This deck's probably gonna be pretty awesome. We got a Sharima mirror match. I'm gonna keep siphoning strike. I think siphoning strike can be pretty good here. These Rite of Callings. <laughs> this card is maybe costing us these games, to be honest. Like, especially the first game. That looks pretty bad. Because we don't have any because we don't have any allies to kill, so we have to destroy a mana gem in order to cast it. It's looking pretty bad. Sand and blood. But who knows? Maybe if I would have cast it like the the uh, previous game. Yay! Spirit Fire. That's a good card. Maybe I would have found an 11-11 Teemo. Maybe would have been able to hit them with it. This is kind of what we're missing. We're missing like some early stuff. I think that if like if these Rite of Callings were like ancient preparations, actually, that's that's kind of a card that we're missing. If these 
Right of Callings were ancient preparations. I think that would be a lot better. We'd have that predict. We'd have another landmark for Talia. Um, yeah, that's what they should be. And then we'd actually be able to get some bodies out because we could have maybe had some more blockers. We can always rely on you to keep us safe. That's what we're missing. So that's that's what I recommend. Like we should get rid of Rite of Calling, put in Ancient Preparations instead. Because we're just we just don't have blockers. We're just getting run over. I'm very glad we drew the Spirit Fire. Don't touch that. that should be able to help, but we're kind of getting run over. Yeah, we, we do have Golden Ambassador still to draw champions as well. Interesting reaction. I'll make a note. You cannot hide forever, Nasus. So my plan is Spirit Fire next turn. That's why I'm not playing the Teemo. <laughs> but yeah, see, like if we just draw all of our champions naturally, like what are these Rite of Gallings doing? Sharima, uh, yeah, this doesn't. Allow me to clear doesn't vote well. Sand and blood. Right, that's only one-sided. Why was I worried about playing my Teemo? That thing's only one-sided. I could have played that. this. But we still played it anyway, so it's all good. So we have our combo with Ancient Hourglass plus, ta plus Talia. Will they have some kind of protection for Azir? If I go that route. Or should I just go towards Reddington? Maybe it's not worth the two damage. Why, why am I not just attacking with everything? Why don't I just attack with everything? Okay, cool. That could be awesome. Blow up the sun disk. That could be nice. Okay, so they have another either Azir or Rennington in hand that has plus two, plus two. Either way, that's pretty scary. Shurima lives. It is fine. I suppose we do. Excuse us. You spoil the surprise. So yeah, these these need to be something that gives us bodies or something. Like this this card is costing us these games. Because I can't ever I can never play it. It just doesn't do anything. <laughs> yeah, this this is exactly what happened the first game too. Just draw draw all champions and ride a callings. It's just <laughs> We're we're gonna I don't normally like changing like donation decks up, but we have to take out Ride a Calling. This card's not playable. You have given us something to believe in. We have to after this game. Um, Grand, Claza, Grand Plaza or Star Tipped Peak? Okay. 
All right, so we we have enough mana. I'm gonna just destroy a mana gem to draw a champion, just to get a champ, you know, so we don't draw a champion out of the deck for our regular draw. Um, if we do it again, I'll give six, seven, eight. That's probably gonna be enough mana still. It just it makes our draws a little bit better, just taking taking two champions out of the deck. Oh, right. That 3-1's about to die anyway. Alright, well, I guess I could add one more mana. But I don't think we're spending that much mana anyway. Yeah, zero's arise. Nicely, of course. Okay, so let's take these Rite of Callings out. We can see our deck doing some kind of cool stuff, but we can't play that card. Okay, so we're going to play Ancient... That's all we're going to do. We're going to just take that card out, play Ancient Preparations instead, because we, we see here how we just don't have bodies, <laughs> right? Like, our, our opponents are just going wide and attacking, and we just don't have any bodies in play. And so Ancient Preparations will give us another... Um, will give us a 2-2. Two -two. It will it'll kind of help with the card draw as far as, like, the... Um, as far as the Rite of Calling with the, the drawing something after you, like, make it really big. Preparations can kind of help with that as well to predict, but it can give us also another landmark for leveling up Talia. We see we don't have that many landmarks for Talia. It'll give us a landmark to copy, all that kind of stuff. So that should be a good upgrade right there. All right. Okay, Demacia Targon. Mulligan, Mulligan one Chump Wump looking for something else, but I do kind of like keeping Chump Wump because that does help out Golden Ambassador if we have like the Chump Wumps in our opener. So this is much better. So yeah, so this helps out our curve. I know I could have grabbed the Teemo. But you know, like turn so turn two, I'm not playing anything, but I'm saving two mana for hourglass. And now we can have the xenotype. Shape the skies and mold the earth. Cool, seven six jump on. Right on curve. So yeah, this this definitely worked out a lot better. Having that thing to help set up the xenotype. What's the fire breath this time? Hmm? A soldier should know to stay out of the way. Put on me mask, secure me tail, stop to die. Break them. That's not tamper proof. And I wouldn't mind if they use a sharp sight and kill the four three, because then they wouldn't have a sharp sight to block the team home. What's the fire breath this time? A soldier should know to stay out of the way. Six. So if I use three Mushroom Clouds and Teemo, that's four mana. And then I can have Ancient Hourglass for protection. Oh, that's a harvest right there. Okay, so now we know they can't have Sharp Sight or anything, so I'll just give them all of these Mushroom Clouds to double it up.
Okay, now we can maybe have double Teemo. Hourglass Talia. So won't be able to play Talia, unfortunately. Won't be able to get double Teemo. Oh, we got a fight spell out of, out of their hand. Witness my true power. We got 38 puff caps. Chump lump. Okay, do I just hit them? I feel like if they have any spell that stops Teemo, it doesn't matter if we play something first or not, right? Because they'd have to they would have like sharp sight or fight spell. So either way, if we play this thing first. They'd still have it. Whether or not we play the chump one first. Hmm. Well, I guess that didn't work. The reason why I would want to attack there is, you know, like looking at Screeching Dragon and, you know, of course, the, the Siobhan S Challenger also. This thing goes into being a, a seven eight after challenger. Like my my seven six had the best attack it, it could at that at that point. I drew zero puff caps. I'm definitely going to need my opponent to not continue to draw zero puff caps when they have two puff caps per card. Alright, I imagine this game's over. Hopefully we can find something good. That's not really it. Two. Get him, Talia. Draw eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Three. That's not eight. Okay, let's draw like a Teemo. 
Because all we need, we need my opponent to draw like two puff caps and then three puff caps, right? Like two and three. That's certainly doable. Need them to draw five puff caps over the next two turns. So, certainly doable. The average number would be a little bit less than four puff caps, but you know, we oh, just need them to draw a little bit above average. So now that that hurts, only one. If it was important, that hurts. So now we need four puff caps here. That's going to be pretty unlikely. Oh, never mind. Well, I guess that's not lethal. Why are they not playing? So we know that Eclipse Dragon just made a Dragon and a Celestial. So we know these two cards right here are Dragon and Celestial. They have 10 mana. There's no way, like, these three 1-1s one can't be the f best things to... They can't be the best things to attack with. Like, they had to have made better Dragons and Celestials than 1-1s. One one so unless the last card's like another rally, this was... Yeah, so they could have had another 4 damage on me. Come on, 4 puff caps. 1, 2, 3, 4. No, just 2. They drew 2 less puff caps than average since, since we gave them... Because like 4 turns ago... Four turns ago, we had it where it was uh, 25.50? Or no, it was 24.40. 48 or something. I don't know. They drew two less than average. There's the one turn they drew zero instead of two. And then there was a turn they drew one instead of two. So like those, so that was three less. But then there was one turn they drew three instead of two. So that was one more than average. So if they would have just drawn the average of two puff caps a turn for the, for the rest of the game, we would have killed them. But... They drew two less than than average, and they ended up at two. Okay, Ezreal LeBlanc. Let's see if we can pick up a win. Our deck hasn't looked that bad. We had, you know, like we just had like those two games, like where our hands were like super awkward with those Rite of Callings. I liked the I liked the change that we made for the last game, taking out Rite of Calling. But like we we've been we've been close to winning all these games. I guess I'm just gonna mulligan this. Keep the others. I could see setting the Teemo back, honestly. I think I will, actually. Because just 1 1 Teemo isn't really going to do a lot of damage. Like, they're, they're gonna easily kill. You know, like, they're an Ezreal deck. 1 1 Teemo is gonna die way too easily. I do like the Xenotype Researchers plus Quicksand against Ezreal or against LeBlanc. Alright, we need to get buffer Teemos. Yeah, I'm not sure either. And I thought there was something good to see. So just gonna play this because it's a five seven on curve. Usually I like get, get the researchers in play, of course, and get those buffs going, but five seven on turn four. All right, seven mana thermogenic beam. No, thank you. Yeah, we'll still upload this to YouTube. Uh, I upload decks even if they don't have the best record. That's okay. Like I said we've had some close games and some interesting games and everything. We've we've had some poor luck though. We've had two games of draw all champions plus ride of callings that didn't do anything, and then that last game. If we could have got, just got like normal puff cap luck, we would have won. Time for a true but we got abnormal skill. puff cap luck. Interesting reaction. I'll make a note. Not such. That's not tamper proof. <laughs> yep. That's fine. That 5-4 was pretty scary. Kind of think I had to kill it. I 
don't just pass. Okay, that's a good way to find a bigger Teemo. Victory requires a sharp blade. I'll just let that trade with one of these things. Ah, uh, I was really hoping it'd be, you know, like get the plus three, plus three from the Xenotype researchers as well. Yeah, I think so, Mervin. Unless, for some reason, the stream lasts a really long time. Should I throw this quicksand out there? I guess I could. Yeah, we could. Because I want to have... Okay, as far as like playing Teemo goes, I want to have another six mana to protect Teemo. Because I want to be able to Ancient Hourglass Teemo if they kill it, and then also Promising Future the Ancient Hourglass. All right, so I don't really want to throw out Teemo without that much mana. I guess I could play this 1-1 Teemo, and maybe they use a removal spell on it, and then it helps save my 3-3 Teemo. So probably don't have like a ton of removal spells that do three damage. Ah, uh, they still get the three drop. Interesting. I guess I could wait on this because I have Spirit Fire. They'll kill this 3-2 next turn. I guess I don't have to attack. So yeah, they... Okay, so if you're wondering what my opponent was doing with that play, they used Mimic... <laughs> Two Teemos, you jealous? They used Mimic to be a 3-mana spell to turn on the Tribeam and Probulator. to make Tribeam and Probulator do three damage. And then the copied one would still only do one, so they couldn't use the copied Tribeam and Probulator, because that's something they changed with Mimic and with the, the latest patch that changed. So, like, Mimic doesn't make the copied Tribeam and Probulator do, you know, like, three damage as well anymore. It, it only does one, the new one. Beachy Rised! Okay, so there we go. We got our win. We got two 5-5 five, five Teemos. That's what our deck's supposed to do. Got that victory. There we go. Okay, so there we go. We went 1-4 with Teemo Talia, but the deck honestly wasn't too bad, right? Like, we had just some, some really poor luck in a couple of games. Like, this is just kind of like the variance of only playing five games of the deck. But we had some pretty bad luck in, the, in two games of, like, drawing five champions and both Ride of Callings. That was pretty unfortunate a couple of times. And we had one one game where we didn't have very much puff cap luck, where we could have won if we had better puff cap luck. But I think that uh, moving forward, like I, like I said, like I, I did change the deck. I did take out those right of callings, put in the ancient preparations. And I, I like that a lot more. I think that this just makes a lot of sense. Uh, for a very, you know, for a wide variety of reasons for all of it. The predict basically does the same thing that you, that you want your right of calling to do anyway. The, um, and like it really helped us like the one game of like whenever we played it on turn one of predicting and finding the xenotype researchers to play on turn three on curve that actually really helped us so i think i think that works just as well you get the landmark to help level up uh talia that's important you get another landmark that you can copy with talia again important and then you also get the 2-2 body just to be able to block and uh get into combat for you so I think that all works pretty well. But I think that like this was a cool Xenotype Researchers deck with not that many other bodies. Um, and also copying Teemo and making multiple Teemos is pretty cool. So I like that as well. So yeah, like there's you know, like this is not gonna be like a top of the metagame deck, but that's not really what we're trying to to play here. We're trying to play a deck that can get some wins and have some fun and uh, make a bunch of Teemos 
make some different copies. I have to say that I liked the Promising Future with um, Ancient Hourglass. I thought that was a, a pretty nice little combo there to be able to get another copy of your champion in play. That, that's pretty cool. I haven't done that one before. Um, but there we go. All right, so that's Timo Talia. So those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And of course, as always, feel free to leave those comments as well. I'd appreciate that. But thank you so much for watching some Timo Talia, and I'll see you for the next video.